Well, I think we can say safely that the starting gun has well and truly been fired on the presidential race, which is for the moment at least, but just for the moment, looking very much like a Trump Biden rematch, which is to say a race between two men who have 157 years on this planet between them. Let's check in and see how the two candidates are doing, shall we? Here's Donald Trump campaigning a night or two ago in New Hampshire, site of the next presidential primary next week. And remember, as he speaks, he's got to clear out his opponents Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis before he can take on Biden. The people behind Nikki Haley are pro-amnesty, they're pro-China, they're pro-open borders. You know, she wants open borders, don't kid yourself. Pro-war, and they're pro-Biden, because those are the people that are sending them. Biden people are coming in, they have Biden stuff, and they're coming in to register and to, to vote in your primary. It is crazy. The radical left Democrats are supporting Nikki Haley because they know she's much easier to beat than Trump. And you know what? If she weren't, they wouldn't be doing it. But, you know, they're great disinformation people. Misinformation, disinformation. You know, they're almost the same, but not quite. But let's not go into definitions right now. They're very close, actually. A lot of people still don't understand it. So, question for you out there. Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis? Which candidate do you think he's more concerned about? I knew the answer to the question that morning after the Iowa caucuses and saw in my email inbox not one or two, but five emails from the Trump campaign attacking Nikki Haley for being a warmongering, open borders loving tool of the Democrat establishment. And this is just a small bit of the full court press we are going to see against Haley over the next few weeks and probably at least through so-called Super Tuesday in March. And let's be clear here, Trump has a real point about Haley. Nikki Haley has gotten big bucks, including a pile of money from Reid Hoffman, one of the founders of LinkedIn. Make no mistake, along with never Trump moderate Republicans, a lot of people would love to see Trump knocked out and Haley win the nomination. Because for them, it's a no-lose situation. Either Haley becomes a female version of Mitt Romney and they tear her down the same way they did old Mitt, maybe without accusing her of having binders full of women, or she wins against Biden and the establishment is still spared the horror of a MAGA presidency. Meanwhile, let's check out on the other side of the ledger how Joe Biden is doing. Well, he went on vacation on December 23. Hey, so did I. But I think even I managed more public appearances than the president did since then. I mean, have a look. He was, though, looking pretty vigorous over the break. Uh, this is Morgan Sherwin and uh, Sam Sarudi. Uh, 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 there are our team members here. Uh, they help us. They uh, they help us, uh, you know, service and sales. Good to see you. Yeah, such vigor, so totally with it. Performances like that are why, along with Hunter Biden trouble that is still brewing, I think there's a very good chance that Joe Biden does not make it to November and indeed steps down or is pushed aside for a new, younger candidate. But I also think there is something else that is happening, and that is a reassessment of the first term of the Trump presidency. And it's a message that is going to start being heard loud and clear, that you don't need to like the man to like what he did in office. Since we last got together, the global and domestic situation has become increasingly worse. Houthis supported by the Iranians, who themselves have been empowered by Biden's policy of giving money and power to Tehran, have opened another front of the war in the Middle East. Iran has been shooting at American and Pakistani targets. China has increased its saber rattling against Taiwan. Hundreds of thousands of more illegals have crossed the border into the U.S. And U.S. inflation, once again, was higher than expected. So, going swimmingly, right? People in America are waking up to this, and people you wouldn't necessarily expect. One of them is J Jamie Dimon, global CEO of J.P. Morgan, who had this to say at, of all places, the Davos conference Thursday. When people say MAGA, 
they're actually looking at people voting for Trump, and they think they're voting, and they're basically scapegoating them, that you are like him. Uh, and, but I don't think they're voting for Trump because of his family values. Now, if you look, just take a step back, be honest. He was kind of right about NATO, kind of right about immigration. Mm -hmm. He grew the economy quite well. China, Trade, China ta virus. Tax reform worked. Mm -hmm. He was right about some of China. I don't, th I don't like no, what he did. No, I said China virus. Yeah, I understand. When he, when he may have been right. He, he, and I don't like how he said things about I Mexico. I don't like, but he wasn't wrong about some of these critical issues. And that's why they're voting for him. And, and I think people should be a little more respectful of our fellow citizens. And when you guys have people up here, you should, have, you should always ask the why. Not like it's a binary thing. You're supporting right. Trump. You're not supporting Trump. Why are you supporting Trump? It's hard to Trump? hate 75 million of your fellow Americans. And it's, I, I agree. It's done and, you know, the Democrats have done a pretty good job with the deplorables, but, hugging onto their Bibles and their beer and their guns. I mean, really? Like, can we just stop that stuff and actually grow up and treat other people with respect and listen to them a little bit? Now, I mean, that's really huge. It's remarkable coming from somebody who is at the absolute top of the elite food chain there. And the whole thing was also a real slam on the media as well, who have never shied away from going after Republicans, even when they call for civility against Democrats. So that's why I think this year is shaping to be it up to be interesting in all sorts of ways. So as the kids on the Internet say, buckle up.